Okay. I think we're at the Real point talk. where we need to admit that this was never really a great franchise. Nope. And that they, what? They, we keep trying and trying and trying to find this thing that was never really actually oh, there. Sonic was never there. After waiting years for this game and completing it just a couple of days ago. And when I say complete, I mean I completed this bad boy. And I have a few things I want to say. Is this game perfect? No. Is this game horrible? No. This is a good Sonic game. Let me get that out of the way. It's a good Sonic game. But is it game of the year worthy? I don't know about that one, G. Also, I'm going to be talking about spoilers. Yes, spoilers. If you have not finished the game, go finish the game, then come back to this video. I'll wait. Oh, you're back? Good, welcome. You finished the game? You got the true ending? Good, okay. Because I have a lot to say about that true ending. I, I... Let's wait to get there. First, we're gonna talk about the good, okay? The good of the game. Let's not get too heated right off the bat. First things first, the gameplay. This is the best Sonic has ever felt in years. When I mean years, I mean like, what? Sonic Hero? Sonic Unleashed? I can actually turn as Sonic. I know, everyone clap it up. A basic function is finally in the game. I'm not trying to aim shots at you, Sega. Just thank you, or I guess better late than never, I guess. <laughs> I actually feel like I'm Sonic, especially when you get max rings and you start just sprinting across the map. That's the best feeling. Yeah, what is my dog, dog doing? doing? Like there are so many times when I'm just sitting back in my chair and just running across the map. It's, it's nice, it's fun. I will have to say the puzzles, the puzzles are actually pretty fun. Like here I thought they were all gonna be annoying, but I actually had fun doing the puzzles because they're not that hard, or nor are they that simple. They're like right in the middle. Some people hate the puzzles, but I actually f I found them entertaining. Like, oh, a new puzzle? Oh, but don't even get me started on that first puzzle in the first world where you move the statues. That one was horrible. Like I spent like a good 10 minutes on that one, maybe even longer. And apparently other people are having trouble on that one too. Sega, if you guys do make an update to that game, you guys gotta fix that. Maybe even take it out entirely or make it simple. All right, let's talk about the cyberspace. It's not bad, but let me put it, let me put it like this. Every single time you enter cyberspace, it feels like Sonic is literally fighting you for control. Like he just walks in your room and punches you in the face and steals your controller. Like I'm trying to play Sonic, but he's running off the side of the map. Like, what are you doing, Sonic? I'm trying to win, but you're killing yourself. Stop. And there are so many times when I'm trying to jump or boost and it just doesn't even work. Like I could have made a jump if I could boost, but the boost button is like, nope, no more boost. Almost like you're playing Super Smash Bros when you run out of jumps. It's almost like that. It's annoying. Apparently, modders have already fixed this problem. Hey, once again, clap it up to the Sonic community. You guys are crazy with mods, man. Like, you guys, you guys made some day one mods like 50 seconds when the game came out. You guys are insane. Other from the controls, I kind of didn't have that much of a problem with cyberspace. This may sound crazy, but I kind of got used to the whole, there's only being five uh, level designs like Green Hill zone chemical planet and all that i got used to it and it also helps that it's also part of the story like uh like the reason it looks like that because we're going we're literally going through sonic's memories but it's kind of weird because like shouldn't the cyberspace look like the aliens memories you know that would make more sense and give us better level designs and all that but i don't know i still think it's a way to cut back on uh new stuff because that would be more work to do but at the end of the day it's side content i would prefer new side content but you know Know, but it's side content it's fine it's fun especially the the second cyberspace who in their right mind made it that hard but i have to say i kind of like it for it i know it's actually so hard that it's actually fun i spent like a good two hours trying to beat it and i actually had the most fun i had in cyberspace trying to get that s drake it was so much fun and i was actually looking forward to more cyberspaces being just like that and let's just say none of them are like that and now for the combat everyone kishimoto did it he made the best sonic combat ever where hog get out of here it's all about that frontiers combat it's fun i wish there were more skills 
but I had fun with the combat. Actually dodging, actually having to think in the skills too. I felt like I was playing a Dragon Ball Z game with Sonic, especially the final attack. Just like uses his hands and just like throws a bunch of spiky thingies, whatever they're called. I don't know. That's my favorite one. And it's OP as heck. Use that one to kill any enemies, man. But the boss fights were also amazing. Oh, the boss fights. The boss fights were single-handedly the best part of this game. It was the best part. The music. Oh, the music. Yo, yo, yo. Ah! It was amazing. Like that boss fight, the first boss fight was stellar. The first boss fight was almost as if it was the final boss fight. It was amazing. The final guardian supreme something. It was just a reskin of the first one. Let's not even kid ourselves. And it was easy. Sonic himself said, was that it? Cause it was that simple. Well, it's not even the final boss. Well, if you're playing on easy mode, uh, should I get to the story now? Cause I want to talk about this final boss. I think I'm done with the good. So I really want to talk about this indie in the bad. Let's talk about the story. The story, like the second or best thing in this game. I love the way the characters talk to each other. Like Knuckles, Amy, the way they just communicate with Sonic is amazing. Especially Tails, how he remembers how inconsistent he was in Infinite and Forces. That actually made me laugh because A, the writers were so dookie. Ian Flynn has to make up for it somehow. Like he said, he's wildly inconsistent. And I just like, A, you went wrong there, buddy. Like if you liked Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Unleashed, you're going to love this game because there are so many callbacks. Even the Sonic Boom, like they mentioned sticks. Even this, even the IUW, you comics too everybody's in here no one was left out and i love that the story the writing it's good i don't like how you can miss it you can miss some important dialogue if you don't run in the right place and i found that pretty annoying because like hey just play when i'm just walking around that's all i want to do you know like who knows how much dialogue i missed because i didn't walk the right path and all that you know I'm, I'm, I'm okay with most pop-ins, you know? Like, it's not gonna break the immersion for me. There were so many pop-ins, man. Like, I'm playing on the PS5. How are the pop-ins? But in, at the end of the day, it didn't break my game. I only had one glitch this entire playthrough, and I just fell through the world. Because I did, like, some kind of combo, and I fell through the map. I actually found it kind of funny. And since there's no life system, it's not the end of the world from dying, you know? I told the final boss, that is. Now, let's talk about Sage. I don't... I don't, I like Sage and I also don't like Sage. Like she doesn't tell you anything. Every single time you talk to her in the side missions or on the main missions, she says absolutely nothing. It's like, what are we doing? I'm halfway through the game and you haven't said anything worthwhile, man. It kind of got annoying and I get that. And I get it, you know? She's supposed to trust you. The more the more you save your friends, the more you she trusts you. But it got so repetitive, you know? The game got repetitive. Like, I start to really feel it when I got the Tales' Island. Nothing was really changing, you know? We weren't learning anything, nor were we gaining anything. I don't know. I felt like we were still on level one. Not until, like, the final island was Sage actually talking to you, you know? And in the main missions, can we even call those main missions? Because in the main missions, you were doing... You were doing mini games like they were fun but shouldn't the mini games be for the side missions and not the main missions because what what's the difference then like the talking is cool but i have to waste hearts just to talk to them that don't even really do anything i wish the main missions were more of a spectacle like a spider-man or something mm. this game could have been a 9 out of 10 but just because how bad the final boss was in the ending is i'm jacking that 9 out of 10 down to like a like a, a 7 it's that bad. Like, you cannot hype up this final boss, this entire game, how it wiped out the entire aliens, how it was so powerful. They had to run away and watch their planet get destroyed. You cannot hype up a villain this much just for it to be space invaders, a moon, a purple moon. How can you hype up? How could you do that, man? Like, it was a mini game. The final boss was a mini game. Those hacking mini games what how can you have a first boss that was so amazing and the last boss is literally a pebble a rock like i i was joking i was thinking oh this is like phase one 
the second phase, the rock is gonna crack and like some cell bean is gonna appear. Sonic and Sage working together to fight some Gurren Logan type of boss. But no, that didn't happen. It was just a long monologue saying, you can't win, this is only the beginning. So it's pretty obvious they're setting up like a Frontiers sequel, well most likely going to begin a Sonic Frontiers 2 and maybe even a 3. Also, they could be setting up Sonic Adventure 3 with the characters going on their own paths, you know, like, like Amy wanting to spread her love or something and Knuckles wanting to find his freedom and Tails wanting to get stronger and all that. So they're setting something up. The beginning and the ending of a game is what sticks with you the most and that ending still rubs me the wrong way. It's pretty obvious, you know, they ran out of time and budget, but that makes me think, why did they not just delay the game? Sega, why, why didn't you just delay the game? If the ending, if you had to rush that ending, like it was a PNG of a moan, a mo, I would much rather prefer just a reskin of the first boss again. But you guys already did that for the other final boss, so I don't know. My guess is this, they had money to only do an ending boss or the first boss and they chose to do the first boss to get people hooked that's what i think i'm not gonna let that ruin my impression of the game the game as a whole was fun did it get repetitive yes but yeah what do you guys think do you guys love this game say it down in the comments down below and let's debate about it and all that stuff you know i'm your boy son cousin i'll see you guys in the next one